Hi everyone. Welcome back to Frappe School. This is the fourth chapter in our advanced accounting course. Today, we will be discussing various payment tools. By the end of this chapter, you will learn about payment reconciliations and why they are required, how to create them against normal payments and against journal entries, the bank clearance tool, payment orders and payment requests. Payments are a regular and integral part of any organization's work and it is important to record them in our system correctly. Most payments have invoices and payment entries that are essential to accurately keep track of a company's ledger. Sometimes these payments need to be linked to each other, to invoices and be matched and verified with bank statements. ERP Next allows for various such functions using tools such as payment reconciliation, which helps us link invoices and payments and bank clearance, which makes sure that all the clearance dates in our payments are updated. Further, ERP Next also enables bulk payment orders, payment requests, and many more features for users. First, let's explore payment reconciliations in ERP Next. The payment reconciliation tool is used to link payment entries to invoices. There may be many scenarios where invoices are made and sent and payments are made, but they are not referred to each other. For example, a customer sends payment for an invoice, but in the system, they are not interlinked. Here, we can use the payment reconciliation tool to connect them. We can go to payment reconciliation by navigating to the accounts receivables in the account module or we can even search for it in the awesome bar. We will first need to select the party type, for example, a customer. Then we will select the actual customer and add filters to our search. We can filter using invoice or payment dates, amount, bank account or even cost centers. Once we have selected our filters, we can click on the Get Reconciled Entries and we will be able to see a table of invoices and a table of payments. We can now select particular entries to be allocated or click on the Allocate button at the top to simultaneously allocate all the listed entries. The allocation table will now be populated accordingly. Once we have allocated the amount, we can click on the Reconcile button to reconcile these entries. We will then get a confirmation message. Now, let's go to the sales invoice and see its status. Here, we can see that the sales invoice status has changed from unpaid to paid, as the payment entry has this particular sales invoice ID updated on it. Let's move on. It often happens that the date a payment is received in our ERP Next system and the date of the actual payment being cleared is not the same. Banks usually take a few days more to clear a check or process a payment. Although we can update the clearance dates directly in any payment entry, the bank clearance tool helps us update the clearance date for various payment entries. We can navigate to the bank clearance tool using the awesome bar. As we can see here, we can specify the bank account and the date range to search for the payment entries we want. We can even use the check boxes to define if we want to include reconciled entries and POS transactions. Then we can click on the get payment entries button and the payment entries table will be populated with the payment entries that don't have updated clearance dates. We can even manually update we can even manually upload entries using the upload button. Now, we can set the appropriate clearance date for each entry 
and update them using the update clearance date button. All the entries are now updated with their clearance dates and will show in their respective payment entries. Let's explore payment requests. A payment request is a tool that we can use against a sales invoice or a sales order to request payment from a customer or any relevant party. A payment request is sent via mail and leads to a payment gateway if it is integrated with our system. Let's see how we can set it up. To create a new payment request, we need to create it from either a sales order or a sales invoice. Let's try creating one from a sales invoice. We can navigate to the sales invoice list using the awesome bar. Once we open the relevant invoice, we can go to the create button and click on payment request. Since we've seen this from a sales invoice, the payment request type will be automatically selected as inward. The customer details and amount details will also be fetched automatically from the invoice. Next, we need to add the transaction date and the mode of payment. We can move on to the bank account section and add bank details if no gateway integration is present. Next, we can choose a print format for this payment request and add a payment gateway account here. This will be sent to the customer's email address if set. If not, we can manually add one as well. We can now type a message for the recipient with relevant details requesting payment and add a payment link as well. The payment gateway details section will help us specify the payment gateway that is integrated with our system and the payment account. Let's add them here. This is how the payment request mail will look once sent. Once the payment has been made, the invoice status will be marked as paid and a payment entry will be automatically created. In case we don't have any payment gateways integrated with our system, we can use payment request as a notification or reminder to the customer that a payment is pending and needs to be fulfilled at the earliest. Here, we can add our bank details and the customer can transfer the amount directly. We can also create payment requests against purchase orders or purchase invoices for internal records and then these payments can be processed in bulk using a payment order. Let's move on to payment orders. A payment order is an internal document that helps us record bulk payments against suppliers or other relevant parties. It is often that payment requests are made by one person and cleared by another. A payment order helps collate multiple payment requests into one order so that it can be processed simultaneously. To create a payment order, we need a payment entry or a payment request created in the system. We can navigate to the payment order list using the awesome bar. Here, we can see a list of all previously created payment orders and we can click on add payment order to add a new one. We will first need to select a company bank account from which payments can be made. Let's select our company bank account here. Next, we can use the get payments from button to fetch either payment entries or payment requests into this payment order. Let's select payment requests and add all the payment entries into the reference table. Once we have done this, we can save and submit this payment order and then create payment entries in bulk from here.
A perfect use case for payment orders is supplier payments. Each supplier payment cannot be sent individually to the bank. So payment orders are used to trigger bulk payments. Banks usually have formats which we can use to send across any payment order. This brings us to the end of the fourth chapter in our advanced accounting course. I hope this helped you understand the various tools you can use while recording payments and how different ERP Next features help to seamlessly update your accounting. You can read more about ERP Next on docs.erpnext.com. In the next chapter, we will discuss cost centers and accounting dimensions. Thank you.